Hi everyone, welcome back to the Weather Channel. My name is Zach. In this video, we're looking at Gary V speaking with another listener talking about real estate photography NFTs. Let's have a listen to what Gary's take is on this matter. Hey Gary, Paul Maynard here, real estate photographer in Colorado. Uh, I, what I'm really curious about is how do you see real estate photography fitting into the NFT space? I find real estate photography like I find everything else on earth falling into the NFT space. This is my favorite time. Right now, we're in a very interesting time in the NFT space with so much tension in the real world. Silly things like NFTs seem to you know, slow down. Plus there was an overpopulation of junk. So you have a supply and demand scenario. So we're starting to get to that next stage of NFT land, a nice year into the phenomenon that has been popularized NFT conversation. What we're seeing now is people really starting to be a hair more thoughtful. People are really starting to think. I think we were in the great era of February 2020 to, excuse me, February 2021 to February 2022. I will call that the great era of collectability only or 99% collectability with a hint of utility. I think over the next 24 to 48 months, you'll see a shift in the NFT land where it will be predominantly focusing on utility with a hint of collectability. In a lot of ways, VFriends for me was a 50-50. There was a lot of utility. Uh, I can't believe I put that out in May of last year and here we are in March of this year and still almost every project did not deliver on as much real life uh, accessibility and utility and I'm surprised by that but I'm not surprised by that. It's similar to the question around how do we get engagement from our communities. The, the thing that is so powerful about NFTs is it allows somebody to put in the work, right? Like I just mentioned earlier that VCon's stressing me out. It's a big production. That there's a lot of work into that. I understand why some people would just rather make 10,000 squirrels with a cigar in its mouth and call it a day. But the reality is, is that photography real estate is going to be utility with a hint of collectability. So you're a real estate photographer, beautiful. You're gonna take a bunch of photos of real estate, I assume, houses, homes, inside, outside, and you can sell that as a collection. If you get permission from the homeowner, maybe share it with the homeowner, the royalties and the upfront sales. But the reality is it is very unlikely that the 8 billion people in the world are gonna be overly compelled to collect photos of people's homes. There might be a small, tiny group of 8,000 people and that would be the market, that's beautiful. But to, to get this to a level of millions, those photos are gonna need to represent utility. So for example, if you launched a real estate photography NFT project, which is your photos around real estate, but every one of those photos was actually a ticket to four one hour virtual Zoom lessons on how to become a real estate photographer, all of a sudden you're gonna have aspiring photographers who are looking to do photography for their life instead of working at an office, building a law firm, a clerk, a retail, anything else because they love photography but they're practical. They're not ready to make the jump and be an entrepreneur selling NFT photography or something else. So their practical job will be a real estate photographer. They may buy that utility because they're actually interested in Notice how I even called it, they may buy that utility. They may buy that NFT because it represents the utility. You may then get fame built over time where people may then start collecting your stuff, right? Like if I, let me give you a comp. In 2006, if I decided to review wine on pen and paper while I did Wine Library TV, I would argue that today those reviews on paper, given my popularity, may sell on eBay for 200 bucks a piece. At the time, they were worthless, right? If you think about the 4,000 that I did, so that's kind of how I think about it. I think a lot of NFTs today, right now, sit as very inexpensive on OpenSea, soon to be Coinbase and Meta, sit as inexpensive, less than 500 bucks, less than 300 bucks, but are destined to actually be collectible in nine years, right? The Star Wars figure that I just got in the mail, thank you, Seth Green, my Greedo, an original package, because I told him in a business meeting the other night that I loved Greedo and that was my favorite toy when I was a kid because he was all green and I was a Jets fan and Greedo was a Star Wars character and those were my two passions in 1982. That Greedo was $1.99 in Kmart and Bradley's, I remember. Today, that Greedo that was sent to me graded 85 is hundreds if not thousands of dollars. I'll go look it up later. But the reality is it started off as a toy for kids like me in 1982 at $2 a piece 
Today, because of what Star Wars became, it's worth a lot more. So is Jackson Pollock, so is Andy Warhol, so are many things. Many things start at low and then go up. Right now, we're in a place where things start high and they're all going to come down. Now, what he's saying there, keep in mind, is again, it's about building. I say again because I actually just made a video talking about Gary Vee's V Friends NFTs. But what we're looking at here is IP being driven up <clears throat> pardon me it's about driving up the ip and that comes from whatever value the service is being provided in many ways when it comes to nfts and people saying what do i do with nfts well the nft is the vehicle for a use case it's not necessarily that you're just going to sell an nft i mean you can do but obviously you'll then be basically piled onto the 99 percent of other nfts that essentially don't really do much apart from of course supporting the artist at hand and that in itself is a completely different equation to literally building a business around what NFT technology can actually provide. So, of course, you will be, if you are going into the NFT space, not financial advice, but you will be essentially expanding your business into other operations, most likely, because where is the value coming from? People who say that buying an NFT when it's just a picture is a scam, it's not a scam because at the end of the day, you know what you're buying. But as far as what the actual value is concerned, is there a bubble? Absolutely, there's a bubble. And realistically, when there's no value proposition outside of either supporting the artist or a nice picture, realistically, that NFT is not likely to go up unless there is some value attached to it, which often case means having a use case, i.e. having some sort of business operation, whether, as he said, it's a case of having a one-on-one -on -one Zoom meeting, i.e. education, speaking with people on how to do that service. Whatever it might be, essentially, there needs to be something on the end of it for people to actually use or to have some sort of value on that being said what are your thoughts let me know in the comments below i'd love to hear your take we're going to continue looking at everything nfts crypto and metaverse on the channel it is the web for channel covering everything happening anything like this make sure to subscribe for everything going on have a great day everyone i'll see you in the next web 3 video